at last, at long last, we have a successor to the legendary podcasting studio music YouTubing streaming microphone, the SM7B. Well, sort of. This is the Shure MV7, and this is the microphone they were teasing recently on social media, which very much resembles an SM7B. Now, I specifically went with the silver model because I thought it would be cool to have one that looks a little different because they do. it does come in black, and that resembles the original SM7B quite a bit. But this is very much a different microphone. We're going to look at it kind of in two minds because while, yes, it's obviously built to look like and function like the SM7B. It is a completely different class of microphone, and that needs kept in mind. But they're marketing with the whole idea that it looks like a mini SM7B in mind, and so we're going to utilize that as our, you know, point of reference as well, because that's what they're setting themselves up for. This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die and their new terminal cyberpunk themed stream layout. You've got alerts, you've got overlays, you've got a full layout to choose from, customizable elements, stinger transitions, and all the source files, if you wish, available to edit for yourself and change colors, change aspects, or render them out for YouTube videos. Pretty cool stuff here, and you can save 15% across the entire website by heading over to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die and use coupon code eposvox at checkout. Today's microphone review is a good one. I hope you're ready and strapped in because this is going to be a crazy ride. I'm Eples Vox, your stream professor, and this is the Shure MV7, a new USB and XLR microphone from Shure, the company that makes lots of legendary broadcast stage and other microphones that are used for a lot of production. If you're unfamiliar with the SM7B, it is a roughly $400 dynamic microphone, which means that it doesn't require phantom power and it's mainly activated kind of by the sound of your voice. That's a very rough explanation of how dynamic mics work. Uh, and it is considered very legendary, both for its background noise rejection as well as its shielding. I ran into that recently when I picked mine back up. I have a whole separate video dedicated to why I kind of love the SM7B, even if I don't use it as much as other people. I'll have that linked below. But you'll see it all over the place, from podcasts to YouTube videos to live streams to even music production. It's used for singing and I think even drums sometimes as well. It's a pretty phenomenal microphone, but, it, but it's expensive and it requires some hefty audio equipment to really run. The SM7B is notorious for requiring a ton of gain. And so it, it, on top of the cost of the microphone, it requires quite a bit of audio hardware to power as well. And not everyone's willing to make that investment after they just dropped 400 bucks on a microphone, which is something I discuss back and forth and don't necessarily support, but sure has found a compromise for those working from home that don't necessarily have beefy audio equipment, but want a similar microphone experience. And this one is more catered towards specifically live streaming and video production at home versus more the professional use of the SM7B, if that makes sense. So the package you get for the MV7 is quite interesting as it's a little bit different than the SM7B. You get the microphone itself, you get two different USB cables. One runs from micro USB to type A, which is very unfortunate that they're running with micro USB here. I don't know why. I have to imagine it's just tooling costs, but that's really unfortunate in 2020 to be releasing a product with micro USB on it, especially with the other cable they include. But they include a nice, long, very usable cable for running micro USB to USB type A for normal computer use. And then you also have a micro USB to USB type C cable for use with mobile devices. All right, well, I was mistaken or they haven't released the update to make this work with mobile yet. I have it plugged into my iPad Pro here over USB-C, which is kind of what I thought this was going to let me do. They even have a Sure Plus Motive audio and video app, and neither app detects the microphone. The microphone's just kind of pulsing here, and both of them just read a built-in mic and don't give me any option to change it. So if this will be supported on mobile, it is not yet. They're maybe need to roll out updates or something. I also just use that for running to my computer as well because it was easier. I had a USB Type-C port on the front of my computer ready to go. And then you get the microphone itself. And the package is, like I said, the, the physical form factor is very similar. It's in the same vein as the SM7B. You've got this kind of cylindrical design with the yoke coming out of the center and the nice little knob here. However, you'll notice a couple things are changed or 
moved or non-existent here in that the XLR port is actually on the back and we don't have the physical switches for the high pass filter or the presence boost. We don't have the fancy little knob to screw it onto your microphone mount like on the SM7B and the XLR cable is not moved out here kind of extended so you have the nice little easy to reach XLR cable on the mount either because actually on the back here you have as I mentioned a micro USB connector and a headphone jack because this is both an XLR and a USB microphone which those aren't mutually exclusive interfaces, which is really cool, especially for streamers, as this unlocks a lot of possibility for use as well. Uh, and so that is really cool. And so I have it connected here right now via XLR to my Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II. Uh, but my other testing you'll see in my normal desk setup is actually plugged into the Audient Evo 4 audio interface. Obviously, I tested USB as well, because I go there. You can't see it from this angle, but as we continue the physical tour here, up in the top you have some capacitive buttons and some LED indicators for the status of the microphone. There's a mic mute button, there is a slide to adjust gain or headphone volume, you have a toggle between them, uh, kind of bar where you can get feedback as far as where your mic gain levels are and what your headphone levels are and adjust those here, and then there's a little tap button to switch between them or lock that control so it doesn't change. I kind of wish it was over here. And I guess theoretically I could unscrew it, screw it back in, assuming the tooling is the same, and have it over here. Uh, and I get why they wanted it on the top if you have it mounted from above. But all of the controls are squished under this yoke in a way that for most use cases you're going to be like bumping into it here as you may be able to hear as I'm trying to press the button to get to it. It doesn't seem very well thought out. And I, I, I don't really know what to think of it, especially when most, most microphones have a dial for gain. Like, I have one here, conveniently enough. You just have a little dial for gain. And the, they're quiet, and it's fine, and you know what you're doing. You don't have to fight with it. It's not in the way. And <laughs> this one does not. This is a trying to be like a more bougie approach. And like I said, overall, it's probably fine. But specifically being under here, I'm going to always hit the microphone in order to do it. Versus, like, if it was over here and I had it mounted from the side, I'd just be able to quickly be like, woo, pet the microphone, ASMR style. And I don't know. The buttons being literally like in the corner where I'm like bumping into everything just seems not ideal. But it's a cool little system that you have there and that only works over USB however because obviously if you're on XLR it's all analog and the gain is controlled by your audio recorder. So this microphone can be used by a wide gamut of people by being both USB and XLR compatible and if you're not familiar with what XLR microphones are it's just an analog audio connector that's been used since the dawn of time for microphones that has three pins in it that runs to an audio interface or a recorder or a mixer board or what have you to then power and transmit the audio from the microphone to that system. It's not anything too crazy or scary or anything like that. It's just a big analog connector. Whereas USB is already pre-digitized and all the preamp circuitry is kind of in the microphone itself. And then you connect it to your computer and it's plug and play and ready to go. Now, you'll want to use analog if you're wanting to use it in a mixer. Because you can't use USB mics in a mixer unless it's a virtual mixer. Or for separate audio recording where you don't have a computer, you just have a recorder, or you just want the highest possible fidelity audio recording, you'll always get that over XLR versus USB. The circuitry and the electronics required to cram into a microphone for a USB microphone is always going to be a little bit more limited than XLR. I will say, however, I was very impressed at the difference here in the audio quality between XLR and USB on this microphone. I tested both back and forth, and just the raw audio overall I'm really not seeing a major difference here. There's a little bit more of like a compressed sound in the USB audio that I always hear over USB that's just ever so slightly there, but you're only ever really going to notice it when you're doing A-B testing between USB and XLR. If you're just running with it on one or the other, you'll probably never know it's there. So in this test, I'll be comparing the Shure MV7 over XLR connected to my Audient Evo 4 audio interface versus the USB interface recording at the same time. And roughly, they have about the same gain level set, although the gain difference between USB and XLR is slight. Uh, there's a slight difference there. And the same thing after audio processing is applied. It sounds totally fine. Uh, we'll do some more thorough testing in a moment. I don't want to bore you just yet. <laughs> time codes will be in the description below as always. So you have the USB connectivity. This acts as the USB audio interface for the microphone itself, as well as a sound card for your computer. So you can monitor your microphone through your headphones connected in the back here, adjust the gain and the balance of monitoring versus your system sound. And then you can play back your system sound through it. So just like the Blue Yetis or the Elgato Waves of the world, you can get all of your audio monitoring right here 
in one place, although you do have to have a headphone cable dangling from your microphone, which I have never considered ideal personally. But the loopback is very important for a lot of broadcast scenarios. Of course, if you're using XLR, you don't have that unless you connect USB as well, so you'll need to use the loopback functionality of whatever audio interface or recorder you're actually recording in. So the USB interface is pretty cool. They they ship, it, it's plug and play to begin with, but they ship with a Sure, uh, I forget the exact name. It's a Sure Plus Motive software, which allows you to manage multiple different microphones if they support that software. This is the only one that I have that does. Um, but then set up different presets for gain, audio processing, and things like that on the microphone. Now it's super bare bones in terms of processing, and I don't necessarily like the processing, but it's convenient to have regardless. So you, you have the automatic mode where you just set up like near or far distance from the microphone for gain levels and then it kind of does everything on its own and you're good to go or you can go into manual mode manually adjust the gain for my normal talking space at my desk i needed about plus 27 db of gain on usb keep in mind the usb gain and the analog gain on your gain on your analog receiver are going to be very different like it's plus 27 db on the usb interface but it's close to plus 55 db on my analog interfaces so there's not a direct translation there, although it's roughly twice as much, so maybe. But then under manual controls, you get a couple different processing options, such as a limiter and a compressor, both of which help make sure that when you shout into the microphone, you're not clipping or peaking or distorting or anything like that, which is very important for your listeners' ears, especially when you want to get right on top of that microphone and get some of that sweet, sweet proximity effect. But then they also have a sort of EQ setting which basically matches what the SM7B has in that you have a high pass filter option and a presence boost option. However, compared to even just doing this normally in an EQ in Adobe Audition or even the Reaper VST plugins for OBS, I feel like the processing in the Motive software sounds really tinny and thin compared to what I can do after the fact. So. I'm not a fan of it i just leave it on flat and process it later but you can go on and implement the i would recommend toggling even if you leave everything on neutral turn off their compressor use your own audio processing i would recommend turning on the limiter so that you always have that running to keep you from clipping before you even reach your audio processing stages which is pretty cool now there is a superpower of this usb interface and xlr interface that i briefly touched on before that i think will be very beneficial for streamers especially game streamers and that is the fact that this microphone can connect to both usb and xlr at the same time which means if you have a two pc streaming setup be it for multiple meetings or for game streaming where you have game chat and stuff like that on one computer and then all of your discord and streaming audio on the other computer you can have both you can have the best of both worlds because you can run this microphone through xlr to your go xlr your audio interface your mixer what have you to your main streaming setup and then you can run it through usb to your gaming computer to then communicate over voice chat and that is one of the biggest problems to solve with streaming audio is having your microphone and audio back and forth on two different computers at once it's always a huge pain in the butt to route and this makes it extremely simple even if you buy it intending to use it as an xlr microphone having that extra usb run that you can run to your second computer makes your life a whole heck of a lot easier for being able to manage communications on two different computers which is really freaking cool now you can use both XLR and USB on the same computer if you have certain programs that don't cooperate with your audio interface for some reason or something like that. That is an option available to you. I don't know that anyone needs to do it, but I did test and make sure that that worked. So really, how is the sound quality? Obviously, you've been hearing it throughout the entire duration of this video. It's It's been playing here, both processed and unprocessed at different points in the video with the text indicating below in case you somehow missed it. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with the sound. It's not... <laughs> Again, it's not the same microphone as the SM7B. And in fact, if I pull off the ca the foam windscreen here, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the actual like capsule shield that you see here makes it pretty obvious that it's not the same design whatsoever. It is definitely a different microphone. And that is worth considering. There is one main difference. There's, well, there's two main differences that I feel between the sound of the two microphones. One is the SM7B seems to have a bit more of a lower, richer, warmer presence that plays nicely with my deeper voice a little bit better. This uh, is a little bit brighter. I wouldn't even say it's a bright microphone, but it just doesn't have quite as much of that low-end 
boominess that some people complain about even that the SM7B has. But the gain sensitivity on this microphone definitely feels like a cheaper microphone, like one of their more stage handheld handheld microphone designs. And that may be due to a tighter pickup pattern because most people when they're streaming and recording are moving all around the microphone here. But there's definitely a, a, a what feels like, and I can't confirm this for sure at the moment, but what feels like a sharp increase in curve, like a, a very steep curve in sensitivity the closer you get to the microphone. And so I will have a lot of my test recordings where I get right up on it and suddenly it's really loud and then I pull like even half an inch away and suddenly the gain levels are totally different, which made it a little difficult for setting gain in my audio settings and things like that. But once you have it compressed or normalized out, it should mostly be fine. Background rejection is pretty solid and I will have a comparison of that here that we can roll now compared to the SM7B. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. But overall sound quality wise, I'm pretty impressed with it, and I think for most people for live streaming, this will be what you want in terms of dynamic mic, background noise rejection. You still get that nice little radio sound if you want. You can EQ it to sound totally natural. You can EQ it to sound, you know, announcery or what have you. It's a very flexible mic that I'm very impressed with. All right, now we're going to do the same thing, but compare a couple different processing settings in the Sure Plus Motive software, which gives you a little bit of post-processing, just some presets and things like that. So EQ is currently set to Presence Boost, and then I have Limiter and Compressor turned on. However, I will compare to Presence Boost plus High Pass, as I feel like their High Pass works a little, or has a little bit of a different effect than the High Pass that I applied within my EQ processing in Adobe Audition. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. <laughs> Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. And for a point of comparison, here's how the USB microphone version sounds using the same filter settings for EQ and compression and makeup gain inside OBS using the free Replugs plugins for VST versus how I'm doing it in Adobe Audition. I've swapped between it here with the text indicating below should sound pretty similar. White noise pointed at the microphone. Coming around to the right side here and around to the back side, over on the left side, on top of the microphone, below the microphone, and back in front. Now we're doing a talking while clicking and talking while typing with Cherry MX Blue switches with O-rings. Talking while typing, talking while typing, tippity tappity tip tap 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 tap. All right. All right, we've got the white noise pointed at the microphone. Going around the right side. Going around the back side. Around left. Up top. Underneath the microphone and back up front. Now we're gonna do a mouse click, 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 and talking while typing, talking while typing, exact same keyboard as the SM7B, talking while typing, typing while talking, do 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 tippity tap. So MV7, I am pretty hyped for it. If I had to choose, like if I had unlimited budget and I had to choose between the SM7B and the MV7, and I also had the budget for a beefy enough audio interface or recorder to power the SM7B and the right audio routing if you need dual PC stuff, I would still go with the SM7B, especially since it's only, if I'm, I don't have the price on hand, but from what I recall being told about the price, it's only like a hundred bucks cheaper than the SM7B. I feel like to really have kind of put the nail in the coffin for, which I guess they don't want to sabotage their own market, but to really like have streamers go after this versus the professional users going after the SM7B, I would have kind of preferred it to be a little bit cheaper than it is. Although there will be sales, we're right before the holiday season here, you know, there's lots of possibility for that. But I think the flexibility that you're getting out of this actually makes it a much more appropriate microphone for live streaming and like video conferencing, teaching, video chatting kind of scenarios compared to the SM7B, which is built for a studio environment more or less. So 
Here are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Is this the microphone that you were looking forward to when you started seeing the teasers? Is this the SM7C equivalent that you've been looking for or the USB? I've seen a lot of demand for a USB SM7B. So theoretically, this should satisfy this. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Evil Vox. I'll see you later.